Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another IFED Night Talk. My name is Andrea Ricci, but tonight I'm known as Andrea King. Today, we are interviewing Dr. Rafi Romano from Tel Aviv, Israel, and Dr. Mauro Fradiani from Pesaro, Italy. The purpose of these interviews, as you know, is to find out what is behind great professionals, what is behind people that we admire on podium and during congresses and courses. For sure, they don't need any introduction, so I would like to go straight to the first question. So first of all, Mauro, welcome. Hi. Tell us, what is your story? How did you end up doing dentist? Oh, it's quite a long story. It's a long time ago. I still have to remember something so far away. Uh, actually, I was really not, uh, uh, you know, done to, to become a dentist because actually my life was uh, different. At the beginning, I was a journalist. I was, a, you know, a quite important journalist in my city, in Ancona, it's a small city, 100,000 people over there. But actually, it was the second series of soccer game, soccer champion. And there was uh, one of the first private radio speaker that was uh, there. And actually I was young at that time, I was like 25, 26. I was not uh, yet uh, uh, diplomat in, in, in medicine. I was not still uh, yet a physician. And actually I was really earning a lot of money. I can tell you the truth. I was a lot of sponsors. They gave me also the cars to go to the other cities, you know, for the, for the soccer game. But certain must have been fun. Must have been fun. Yeah, very fun because I was young. I was uh, every weekend. I was out following the 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 the, the team. But at the same time, I was uh, you know having some some fun, some some vacation together with that. So what was nice. But then uh, I was uh, finally became a physician because in Italy at the beginning you become a physician and then you do specialize in dentistry. And actually, I was uh, in the tennis uh, circle in the tennis uh, uh, area. And uh, actually the, a, a guy, a, a friend of mine was a, a dealer of, of, uh, of dental products. And he started to say, why you don't become a dentist? You know, being a physician, there is not so much uh, free space to, to, to work actually it was complicated. Dentistry was not so complicated at that time in terms of having the chance to go in the, 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 the faculties. And I decided to go to another older guy that was a dentist, of course. I started to see, you know, all these, uh, you know, the parapost, old parapost technique. It was nice, because it was yes. like, uh, seemed to, to build up a, a building, you know, something with the, with the all, all the structure underneath with the, with the, with the post. Yeah, at that time, we didn't talk about uh, uh, you know, uh, bonding. We talk about uh, more mechanical steps. And that was nice. I started to go to this guy. And uh, at this point, I started to decide to become dentist instead of becoming other special in medicine. I see. And Rafi, what about you? Welcome to the IFN Night Talk. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, well, my story is a little bit uh, more simple. Uh, you know, I was just born to a dentist. And, uh, you know, when I finished my high school, and uh, obviously, like most of us, uh, I, I had uh, very good grades, I could learn everything. But I saw my father, and I admired him. And I thought, you know, that's a nice profession, maybe I will learn dentistry. And unfortunately, in my class, I had Bichacho, <laughs> I had uh, other uh, doctors uh, that, uh, you know, they are, they were, when we were students, they were like artists. When, when Nitsan was touching a tooth, it looked like uh, Picasso. And I was not a Picasso in my nature. So I became a dentist, a very frustrated dentist, uh, <laughs> because I looked at my friends and, uh, you know, I wanted to be, when I was young, I wanted to be the king of the world. You know, I was born, uh, I wanted to be the best. And I realized that with my friends and not only Bichacho, you know, I started coming to the European Academy uh, many, many years ago, and I saw that uh, I have to be very good in uh, a specialty. 
And orthodontics is very nice because orthodontics, um, as far as I see it, even until today, it's probably around 80, 90% your head and 10% your, your, hand, your, your hands. So uh, um, since I was considering myself as quite smart, I decided that maybe orthodontics is better for me. And, um, uh, and that, this is how I become a uh, dentist and then orthodontist. And, and uh, um, you know, uh, this is uh, when, when I look at my kids and I ask myself if they will be a dentist too. I think that eventually I was lucky because when I became orthodontist, I start loving my profession. And I think one of the most important thing is to love what I'm doing, what you are doing, to get up in the morning and, and really be happy uh, to go to the clinic, to see patients, to do what you are, want to do. And I'm lucky that eventually, even after 30 years, I'm still happy to get up in the morning and come to my clinic. But I think everyone who go to dentistry should at first understand the type of work that he will doing in order to understand if he really wants to do it and not just to think about the glory or the money. I see. Now, this is something that comes up uh, very often in the night talks. And, and Mauro brought it up. Uh, listening to the, all the interviewed uh, friends, it appears that even before becoming a dentist, they, were, they all were quite successful. Now, Mauro just said that he was a soccer player. He was earning money. He was enjoying life. He was performing very well. And you were saying the same. Basically, you started uh, with a reference like Nitsan and so on. So I have an idea. I mean, I have my, uh, one thought. I would like to share it with you. And please let me know what you think. Basically, no matter what is our profession, it's the attitude. Probably, if we were architects or if we were engineers, we would have obtained the same results. What do you think? What do you think, Mauro and Rafi? Uh, yes, I believe that is right. I believe that, uh, of course, uh, there is a combination of different factors that help you to become uh, who, who you are. And uh, together with your head, that is very important, of course, you should have some little brain, at least uh, working and helping you. At the same time, you have to be, in my opinion, very perseverant to really, you know, uh, you want to obtain something. You, you have your goal in front of you, and you know that if you are, the, uh, if you are determined, if you are really good on that, you should really have the chance to achieve the result, the goal you wanted. And uh, I believe that is a really matter of that, is mostly of that, of perseverance. So passion, Rafi, as you mentioned, together with, uh, with perseverance. Do you agree with Mauro? Yes, but I want to add something. I think that uh, eventually, you know, when we go to dentistry, you go to Mauro was first physician and then became a dentist. And when we go to this profession, and I, I totally agree, if you look at all of us, all of us did many things beside dentistry writing books, uh, inventing implants, inventing uh, system and software and smile design, etc. So all of us have more than just being a dentist. But being a dentist is something that really inside you to take care of people, to be like, like um, uh, the, the um, healer of, of, of people. And this is not only just uh, being a computer guy or engineer or architect. Uh, we are um, uh, escorting people. We are uh, together with them for many, many years. And this is something in your personality. If your personality is, is built to be doctor, like our grandfather were, you know, like, like a true doctor that come with his bag to the house and treat people. So today we have a team. We have interdisciplinary. We have many assistants. We have glory. We sit on podium. But at the end of the day, it's you and the patient. So if you have inside the desire and the passion to be um, a doctor, then go to such profession, you know? And, and for me, this is uh, what um, bring me uh, up every day. I am a doctor. I do something for people. I see them smile because of me. 
And, and this is something that is, to me, one of the best gifts I ever can get in my life. Yeah, probably, yes, uh, I, I agree completely with you. Probably the, the, the magic uh, element is the passion. Once you have passion and you have the right attitude, the right perseverance, as Mar was saying, and uh, a mission, I would say, as you are mentioning, results are guaranteed, I would say. Now, let's go to the second question, and let's start with you, Rafi. Do you have people that you consider a reference for you in your life? Well, uh, you know, uh, my first reference, of course, was my father. I think the same like you, Andrea. And because uh, w when I looked at my father, I admire the uh, relationship that he got with his team, with his patients. For me, this is something that I was looking at. But when I grow a little older and I saw uh, our friends in the European Academy and my colleagues, for me, uh, um, I think that all of us take uh, reference from people who desire, who dare, who was not afraid, who was not afraid to tell what they want, to criticize and to uh, strive for something which is good. You know, I just uh, listened to uh, um, all the stories of the big people like uh, Bill Gates, like uh, even I was, uh, I heard um, a story of the, this, uh, uh, champion, uh, Czech uh, chess uh, champion, you know, you, you hear all of them and you hear actually the same story in a different area. They don't have any, the sky is the limit, is something they don't see. You know, we see above. We, we want to be the best and above, which is to me, you know, when I see people like this, to me, this is reference. You know, I see, I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in, in uh, fortune. I don't believe that some people have this um, uh, glory to become uh, good. Uh, you know, that God touched them. Nobody, you know, I believe in, in you know, whatever uh, destiny, but I don't believe in, in uh, having luck. Luck is good, you know, a lot of work. And when I see people who are really succeed and you look at the stories, you see it's all the same in every field. So for me, I hear a lot of successful stories and try to understand, like you did, you know, back 30 years ago, how they started. They had a dream and they, they look at it and they just fight for it. What do you think, Mauro? I think that, uh, first of all, for myself, a very important point was the example of my mother. She's still alive, is one or four, so quite old, actually. And actually, uh, she's a really, really tough, like, tough uh, woman. It was uh, uh, really working hard. It was really, she had a great passion, passion for everything. It, that was a really great example for me. On the other hand, um, on the field of dentistry, generally speaking, I believe that uh, I have a different, uh, a more than one uh, person to be related to. I mean, actually, I would like to say that there are people that uh, are good for some aspect, other people are so good for other aspects. I believe that if you are smart enough, you should take something from uh, many people, not just for one. Because uh, many, many times the big success is also achieved by the combination of different factors, not just one. And uh, I believe that it's important really to follow the example of other people, maybe is uh, that you admire them because maybe they're good for something. But again, not just for one aspect, but for different aspects that they have to put together. Interesting, yes, very nice. Uh, what personal feature, Mauro, do you think allowed you to get where you are and to achieve your results? Uh, maybe I repeat what I said, maybe the passion. Passion and perseverance. I believe that uh, two important steps that uh, really have to be combined and be together. And actually, yeah. I believe that uh, I did many, many things on, for passion. And all the time I have something to achieve as a result is the goal that I have to achieve. And I find in any way, the way how to arrive there more or less, and not everything, of course, but I don't want to exaggerate it, but, you know, I want to just to say that, you know, if I have a goal in mind, 
I really fight incredibly in uh, to achieve the the good result, the final result. So that is maybe the main feature features that I can uh, uh, can see. Rafi, what is yours? Oh, I believe, of course, passion. We all talked about passion, and this uh, leads my my my. Uh, uh, you know, a daily uh, being. But uh, I, I think that if I have to, to uh, say one, one word, I would go for humbleness. I believe that uh, for me, I always, even after 30 years and being in the level I am, and we all know that all of us arrived at a global level, that we could think of ourselves as, as uh, very, very... Uh, uh, influential, very intelligent, but I remember all the time to be humble, to say, I don't know, to say, I want to get more advice, to say, I want to do more consultation. I want to think because at the end of the day, and this is what I started before, we are doctors, we are human, and, and there are many ways to get to some point. And as Mauro said, I get um, you know, my, my knowledge from different people and I combine them and I try to uh, uh, get the best treatment plan. And we do mistakes. It's normal. We, we do mistakes, we, but I, I want all the time and I'm humble. I try to be humble and remember that uh, there is no right and wrong in dentistry. There is my way and there is other ways. There is no right and wrong. Because uh, you know many people that said in the past on many things they are wrong, Today, they are the standards. You know, I remember that we had this discussion about digital impression and everybody in the academy said, no, 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 it's not precise. This is not the right. And, and today, everybody do digital, you know, and same for other things. So be humble, I think, is one of the things that you don't, you have to remember even after 30 years and more. Very nice, very nice. And um, so this goes to the next question, probably. So what is the most important feature that uh, a successful person have? I think, uh, you know, the passion tr is translated to joy. For me, you know, I want that me and my team will get up in the morning and come to the clinic with smile. Now, this is, you know, a, a very, you know, nice word to say to come with a smile. And if you fight with your wife or, or uh, uh you know, your, one of your assistants had a problem in the traffic and she come very, very angry. But inside, I want them to be happy. You know, happiness and, and joy is part of the, the reason for us to do the work, you know. And, and to get money, of course, is a bonus. But I want to be happy. And happy is from passion, from preservedness, from everything. But for me, and you know me for many years, I'm happy and happy not outside, but inside. And this is important because my father used to say, if a person get up in the morning sad and, and unhappy and go to work, this is probably the worst thing that happened to him. Yeah. And Rafi, uh, this is uh, something that I really believe in. You talk about happiness or joy or do you think you can, you can uh, let me put it this way, force yourself to be happy? I mean, uh, can, can that be intentional and not something passive that you basically uh, ha happen to have, you know? So if everything goes right, you're happy. If something goes wrong, you're unhappy. Do you think this is the right way or do you think you should, as you mentioned probably, if I got your, got your message, is... Basically, you can decide and force yourself to find the good things about life, the good reasons why you wake up, and the positiveness of what happens to you around, around you, and focus on what brings you joy. Is this something that you are talking about? Yeah, this is a very um, complicated question, so I try to answer it. Uh, you know, I don't think you can force yourself to do anything, okay? Uh -huh. But I believe that you can teach yourself to look at the good thing that happened to you during your work. You know, if I have a patient that unsuccessful, unsuccessful with my personal attitude with him, unsuccessful with the treatment, it happens, it happens to all of us. 
So you can let it ruin your day or you can tell yourself, you know, I had eight hours in the clinic and 30 minutes of this day was shit, was wrong. But when I go home, I don't let this half an hour destroy this whole eight hours. So, you know, I try to understand that my profession has mistakes. My profession has problems. I cannot guarantee that everybody will love me. I cannot guarantee that 100% of my work will be perfect. But I can guarantee, and this is what I tell my patients. I tell them, you know why I'm happy? Because I will be for you even if I fail. And I will help you to get the better result even if we fail, because we will fight together. And then patient relax because he knows I'm there financially, professionally, I'm there for him. And, and then I'm relaxed. So it's something you teach yourself. You cannot look at bad things and say, no, the bad is good. No, the bad is bad. But you can teach yourself how to do your uh, perspective, you know, how to learn. And this is something I did in my clinic, you know, and I do it daily. I tell my staff, you know, when a patient comes to the office and you want to kill him, and it happens to all of us every day. And, and I tell them it's his problem. His personality is like this. So why to let it ruin our day? And then when he is going, then we are again happy. So it's something you teach yourself. You don't force yourself, but you educate yourself. Mauro, what to is say, your Raffi, opinion on this? long uh, story by uh, my Rafi. Rafi <laughs> said everything you need to say. Actually, I believe that the teamwork is a really, really an important step. And I want to tell you that uh, I believe really on that. Knowing that uh, I have a couple of, the, of my dental assistants that are working with me the last 35 years. So they are really quite uh, expert on, on the field of cross. And I have other people working with me for like 25, 27 years. So that is uh, valid on the, on the office, on the, on the chair, but also on the didactic the, the part, because I'm, uh, I mean, my family is growing up, or other people are coming you know, to for the education team. So I really still uh, have enough energy to organize it, to set up all this stuff, all this stuff. But to have this kind of result, of course, you need the collaboration. Uh, of, uh, of your team, of your people that work with you. And again, I think that uh, they show with their presence every time you need that they would like to really stay in the group and uh, uh, grab everybody at the same time because we'd like to really enjoy our life and uh, having the chance to arrive to the office, not having already a tired day, but a really positive day. And even though you sometimes you have a negative uh, uh, result, in our work, that's normal. That's absolutely absolutely normal to have it. Again, I found that in any way the chance to be positive in any way. So maybe I be furious or so upset for five minutes, but then I start to think about what to do next in a better way. Of the same field that I was fighting now, but also having the chance to say new stuff, new new steps can be at this point. Uh, calculated to be done uh, to uh, improve our final goal that is always quality and also not, the, not just the quality of your work but the quality of your relationship with the patient that I believe that is absolutely important that Rafi said that in a perfect way I agree 100% what he said and of course that is really a big combination. What I found quite complicated but still is something that I, I fight every day on that is to combine the office work and the uh, education work. That is not easy because of course, being together in the same building, we are always busy in both parts. And that is complicated, but still is some challenging that I would like to have it just to, 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 to feel still alive. And still, still quite young, <laughs> even though age is not the ideal one. And knowing how busy yeah. you are, you are very, very I young. <laughs> Andrea, yeah. Andrea, just to add something about what Mauro said, I believe that we have responsibility, you know, because our team that Ma Mauro just talked, you know, that are with us so, for so many years, they look at us. And if we are angry and, and sad, they are all inspired by us 
And then all atmosphere is like this. So I feel responsibility that all my team will look at me and see that nothing happened. Everything will be okay. We'll find the solution. And then they have the energy to take me and the patient, you know, forward for the day. Very nice, very nice. Mauro, uh, what do you do very well besides dentistry that we know? <laughs> what do you do very well? Uh, once I could say to you, I was a good driver of my cars. That was also a racing, but when I was very, very young. That was a nice uh, period of my life. Secondly, as I said before, I was uh, also a journalist. I was, uh, you know, uh, really commenting the, the, the race, not the, 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 the match, the, the second match. And that was a really good one. I was also selected by Rai. Uh, radio television, Italian radio television, and but I was uh, just uh, diplomated uh, in my in my specialty in, in medicine. I was already a physician, and uh, I didn't accept it to go, uh, but was uh, on calcio minuto per minuto transmission. That was a really family transmission in Italy, and uh, you know I said no. Uh, it was a direct no. It, I didn't see. I didn't say. I think about it and then I let you know. I decided to say no immediately because my father and my mother was really, I mean, they did so much to help me to become a physician and dentist that I was respecting them so much to avoid, to not do, not, to, not to do what I what they do to, to become a physician, actually. That, yeah. I see. And uh, Rafi, what do you do very well besides being a great orthodontist? Everything. <laughs> no. uh, well, I, I think if I have to um, put one or two things that I think I do good is one, I have this probably desire or talent to do, to be product, uh, pr pr uh, producer. You know, I can, uh, as you know, organize local uh, meeting uh, manager or, you know, I like to, to organize things and be very, very uh, pedant, you know, in all the small details, which I, I, I love it because I do it in my office. So I like to connect all. And I think uh, uh, the second thing is the fact that I love people. And, and what I do in the last 30 years, I interact, interact in the school with uh, all the committees in my, my kids, you know, in school. And I, every time I lecture, I go home and I write emails to all the people that I met. And, and during the 30 years, the networking, I feel at home in so many places around the world that uh, for me, this is a gift because I feel I have true friends around the world. And, and this is what life means because, uh, you know, after all, what, what are we without our family and friends? So uh, this is, I think I'm good in it. I don't know what other people think, but I think I'm good in it. I agree with you. <laughs> Uh, Rafi, how difficult is for you to change your habits or your protocols, not only in dentistry, but in life and in dentistry? Well, uh, we have a very limited time in this interview, so I will not tell you the whole story of my childhood. But uh, if I know to do one thing is to change immediately protocols that I feel do not work. You know, and I did it in my clinic so many times. I do it. I will give you just an example because uh, some years ago, I um, uh, realized that uh, I need something to explain patients what I'm doing. So I created some um, um, video in tablet and I gave it to the assistant and I told them, uh, okay, now, uh, and, and the video was only, you know, pictures and video, but without sound. And I told them, okay, now you sit with the patient, show him the tablet. And after like two months, and I forced them to do it, it's very important, blah, 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 blah. And I saw it's not working because they have to talk to the patient and show him the tablet. So it didn't work because, you know, they're talking and have to show the tablet. And then I realized, so I sat down and I recorded myself uh, explaining everything, showing everything. So now patient comes, we give him a tablet. We tell them, you watch the video until it ends. And then the team will come to add more information. And boom, it worked immediately. 
And I do it with technology that I put in my clinic. I do it in life. I didn't change wife until now, but I change a lot of other things. I change sport. I change, you know, I realize if something doesn't work, don't go with your head to the wall. Try to understand why it doesn't work. If it needs more effort, do it. But if it, it is because you do something wrong, change. You know, it's like uh, when you go, um, uh, you know, in the street and you see that it's blocked, you can try and push the car or you try, you know, to do it in another way. So to me, changing is a daily um, routine. You know, it's not something because protocols were written by humans and we need to change it if needed. Nice, nice, Rafi. Mauro? What to say, more than uh, Rafi said. <laughs> we know Rafi very well. We know each other. Do you remember Rafi when we met each other the first time? When? Of course then. I remember. I think it was in... I think it was in, in uh, San Moritz no, or, in uh, or in no, Bergen. before, in, in Bergen. Bergen. I still okay. I was saying, oh, dear me. So, really <laughs> incredible time. Talk, talk, I was talking all the time during the, the trip. <laughs> nice to talk. talk, yeah. Yes, yes. 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 we did. Yes, yes. 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 You, you came to me and said, why do you <laughs> talk so much? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now just to say about protocols, about uh, if I'm able to change my mind, definitely yes, maybe even too much sometimes. So actually, I believe that it's important to follow protocols. I'm now talking about mainly about uh, my work, my, 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 daily, my daily work. And of course, uh, I would like to be uh, sure that what I change is something that has to be changed in my mind at least. It's not easy all the time, sometimes there are some doubts, but I believe that doubts are necessary to really uh, have the chance to explore all the steps in order to know exactly if you're right or wrong or doing that. Uh, so I feel comfortable to change uh, protocols if they are supported, of course, by literature most of the time in our work. If I don't have any kind of support, I normally don't, don't, uh, don't push you know, on this direction, I would like just to say, I would like to try uh, to check what happened in the dental community in terms of uh, scientific uh, uh, response. If that uh, is confirming what I believe that is uh, something to, to, to follow, I will do it easily, uh, easily. I, I, I am quite positive on that. I'm, I'm very elastic on that. So I believe that is something that I to to be uh, in, a, in the daily work that you do, uh, to be elastic also, you know, with, the, uh, with, the, with, your, with your staff and with the patient. Some, sometimes patients are, you know, are good. Some of the time the patients are not so good in terms of uh, human being, but you have to, unfortunately, uh, be elastic enough to consider this a kind of uh, problem that you have to solve. As uh, Rafi said, I'm, I believe that in this case, even though the patient is a really difficult patient, you have to do the maximum you can and show your elasticity, mental elasticity, to really uh, achieve what you believe that is the most important uh, result on your office, that to create and uh, to maintain, especially, a kind of climate, a kind of atmosphere that is a positive atmosphere for everybody, staff and yourself and patient, of course. Yeah, I believe, I believe, Maro, you are underestimating yourself because most of us, including you especially, because I follow you for the last 30 years, most of the things were written by you, were not just checked by you, were written by you, were in a way invented by you. So we are trying some protocols which are not uh, um, necessarily based on scientific. It's based on our experience, our clinical experience. Of course, we rely on, on scientific evidence and, and uh, articles and other experience, but I admire you for so many years for being uh, uh, you know, leader in inventing protocols. And this is why people are uh, still looking for your books and for your courses, because you are, in a way, you tried it in your clinic and then you inspire people. And I feel all of us, uh, at least most of the active members are like this. You know, they are pioneers in every field that they are doing. 
Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. And one, one, one question. So if something goes smooth and you have a protocol that works very well, you have a lot of experience, uh, it, you have uh, scientific evidence of proof that it works and it is correct, you have great results. Do you see a reason to change something or you stick with that? Or if you want to change it, why should one change something that works? That's a very, very good question. I believe that we have a responsibility, not only for our patient, but for the, as Mauro said, part of his work, at least half of his work is education. So if I have to teach and there is a new technology, a new protocol that somebody else is doing and work nice, and my protocol works nice as well, I will try that protocol because I want to, when I lecture, I want to say, yes, I tried this protocol and I want to try it not just once. I want to try it properly and see if it's good. And sometimes I'm surprised because it's better than what I did before. And if it is not, at least when I lecture, I can say, yes, I tried it because I don't think it's legitimate that we will say, no, this protocol is good or not good if you didn't try it. And, and we are educating, we have responsibility for the new generation of pros, of ortho, of, you know, aesthetic dentists. Very nice. And Mauro, yes. uh, why should we change? I believe that, uh, no, I mean, as I said already, uh, I believe that you should be elastic enough to change if you believe that the, what, you, what you see now, uh, what you believe, uh, what you new stuff will be uh, a better solution for yourself. Uh, like digital, you know, I'm the one that is maybe came later on digital, but of course the road is already signed. You cannot uh, do differently. Probably, I don't know, if you take the impression on digital way, I still working maybe on a few elements, not the entire mouth. I still the entire mouth believe that the, uh, the regular impression material will be, I don't know, in my hands, still better to do it. So for big rehabilitation, I still use that for minor things, minor stuff, I will be uh, using digital. I mean, uh, I use digital. So but actually, uh, you cannot avoid it. The technology is, uh, you know, coming out uh, in rapidly. And of course, I believe that you have to follow this kind of uh, road. You cannot uh, say, I know I'm doing well, so I can stick on this. Uh, I believe that you have to be elastic again, enough to be able to change if needed. It's not needed all the time, but it's needed most of the time. Okay. Now, Mauro, uh, what do you tell yourself uh, in your difficult moments? What is your inner dialogue? Hmm, that's very personal, huh? Difficult. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we want to know more about you. Okay. Uh, I believe that the one important step to say maybe, uh, when I feel something negative, it happens every day for maybe little things, but uh, some other time maybe for more important things. I maybe will be depressed for five minutes, really depressed. And I cannot talk to anybody. And my face, talk to everybody, my face, not myself, just my face. But then after five minutes, I have something inside that grew up quite suddenly, you know, and actually start to become more and more evident, more evident. And I try to maybe change my field and what I was uh, you know, criticized before and what uh, I not uh, well uh, achieved before. And actually I would like to think about other stuff, other, other topic. And I found anyway, one topic that is positive. And I start to, you know, have the chance to talk to in, in, in this manner and to also act in this manner and talking about more and more about the positive area that uh, I would like to, to, to really emphasize. Uh, that is how I came out from the difficult situation in this way. Very nice. Thank you for sharing this. And uh, what about you, Rafi? I, I, will, I will start by telling you a very short story. You know, when I was young, I was a dancer in a group and I was, we were dancing and the manager of the group told us once, when you made mistakes in your legs, 
nobody will notice if your face is relaxed and smiling. So what I do when I have difficult uh, moments, and we all have, uh, not only in, at work, you know, sometimes uh, you get a phone call and, and uh, you know, you are stressed and, and you have to continue working. And I tell myself, I'm human, same way like my patient, same way like my staff. So I tell uh, my staff or I tell my patient, I need time to think about your case. I need to be more relaxed. So I got all the information. I'll come back to you in short while. I don't let myself being stressed by uh, finding solution to my problems, to my difficulties in the certain moment. So I, I, you know, I know I, my patients or my staff, they look at me, they realize something wrong happened. Okay, it's something, I don't know, with my kids or whatever. And then I tell them, okay, give me, uh, you know, a few minutes. I will catch myself, like Mauro said, I will find a, a way to continue. So I concentrate, I tell myself, all right, I'll make a solution. If not now, tomorrow. So I go and, and I see the patient again. I call him and I said, okay, now I have time to concentrate in your case and let's continue. So I think it's important that we will understand that we are not machine. And even if we think we are and we work around the clock and then we teach and then we come home and then we have to be husband and then we have, to, it's not easy. So if I have difficult time, I said, okay, it's okay for us to take a few minutes or a few days off. Very nice. I, I love this question because it digs inside the personalities, which is very interesting. Uh, Rafi, uh, if you would have, this is the last question before a little game at the end of the interview. Uh, if you would have a magic wand, what would you change in your life? Um, wife? No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> life, I, I said, not that. <laughs> I said life. Uh, you know, I get up, if I have a magic wand, I would start all over again and do the same. No. You know, I look, I look at what I did and I think that I did exactly what I dreamed. I did exactly what I wanted and I'm lucky that I arrived where I, I am, but I wouldn't change anything, nothing. That's very nice. I had uh, different answers, but never like replay your life the same way. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's nice. Mauro, what would you do with it? Oh, I feel I feel comfortable in what I do, what uh, every day in my life, in all my life. And frankly speaking, uh, you know, I did uh, mistakes, of course, as everybody else. But uh, all the mistakes were in some way uh, repair, you know. And actually, I believe that uh, you know I wouldn't change uh, what I did, what I what I am. Uh, Sometimes, of course, mistakes are possible and you have to repair in some way, but actually you have time to do it. All the time you have the chance to um, think about what is the mistake, the reason why, and we try to, to avoid to do it again. It does happen sometimes, sometimes it's not happen. You do the same mistake, but anyway, at the end, maybe the, you can find the solution. And up to now, I found a solution for everything in my life and I'm quite happy in what I did and what I'm still doing and quite with a big passion. That's fair. Ah, you, you have here, Andrea, two optimists, two <laughs> optimistic guys. You know, it's yeah. not easy. No, but you know, yeah, this, is, uh, this is quite nice. And uh, I think that after uh, watching uh, all the interviews of the Night Talks, it's interesting because, uh, and this is the whole purpose behind this idea, is that there is a common attitude, you know, there is a common uh, way of living, a way of seeing mistakes, a way, way of seeing and, uh, and approaching uh, difficulties. And it's nice because we can actually draw, uh, of course, everyone has his own feature, has his own reactions, has, his own, has uh, their own uh, objectives and so on. But we can find common uh, features of successful people. Uh, successful not meaning uh, rich or famous in dentistry, but uh, kind of satisfied of their life. It's interesting. Maybe we can put... 
Yeah, but, but you know, Andrea, just because we are closing to the end, yeah. me and Maro uh, are a little older than you, and we watch you for the last, how, how long, 20 years? Yeah. And, 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 you know, there are some people, and this is to me what I did by, why, while I was mentoring Nuno, for example, and others. I, we looked at you, and I knew, I don't know about Maro, but I knew where you are going, you know? And not because of your father, because the burn in your eyes, because you wanted, because you were humble enough and you had the passion. And when you see it, then the talent is above it, you know? And then if you are talented, uh, this is a gift, okay? But you had this X factor when you were young that brought you today to be our interviewer. Thank you. Thank you, Rafi. Thank you very much. Very nice. <laughs> So now we are at the end of the interview and uh, to close up, I would like to play a little game with you. So I will ask very, very short questions and you should reply one or the other option. Like for example, I'll give you an, uh, an example. Tech wise, do you prefer to use, to schedule appointments, the traditional agenda or the smartphone? Rafi? Traditional. Mauro? Nice. So, traveling, nature types of travel or cities? Mauro? Nature. Rafi? City. Cities. <laughs> Do you prefer to travel by train or by plane? Rafi? Uh, plane, <laughs> please. Mauro? Plane. Same. Okay, good. Scars, sport car versus elegant car. Mauro, I know oh, yours. Sport. Or a new Rafi? Elegant. Elegant. Uh, I see. Watch. Apple Watch or Rolex? Rafi? Apple, Apple Watch, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Rolex. 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 Okay. <laughs> Brain. Do you think you are analytical or artistic? Mauro? Artistic. Rafi? Defin definitely analytic. Then, oh. This is a... I, I would have yes. said the same thing. Interesting. Yes. Book. Yes. Kindle or paper book? Rafi? Uh, paper book. Paper. Mauro? Paper book. This, everyone <laughs> prefers paper book, myself <laughs> as well. House, do you like modern house or classic house? Mauro? Modern house. Rafi? Modern. Good. Now the, the, the most difficult one, retirement. Are you going to work in your office forever or, or are you planning a retirement plan? Rafi? I plan to work forever as long as I can guarantee that I give the maximum service to my patient. Nice. Mauro? Uh, I'm the, the, uh, sorry, the, the telephone is ringing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried to avoid this. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sorry. That's, 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 that's okay. So, do you, are you Planning to work forever in your office yeah, or are you planning yeah, to retire sometime? Interrompiamo un attimo qui, scusa. Sì, pronto. No, guardi, è chiuso, è chiuso. È chiuso. È chiuso. Ma ti tagliato. You make cut, right? Sì, sì, lo tagliamo. So, let, let me ask you the, both the same question. Uh, Retirement, Mauro and Rafi, are you planning to work forever in the office or are you planning to retire and uh, find some time for your family? Mauro? Retirement? I'm already retired. <laughs> no, come I'm on. I'm over age, you know? Over, over age. age. But you're working more than before, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I continue until uh, it's possible. Okay. And Rafi? I love my work, so I, I will work until I will be able. When I will not be able to do the same level, the same service, I will definitely retire. Okay. So we reached our end. And as always, I would like uh, to thank you to particip for participating to these uh, night talks. I would like to thank Rafi and Mauro because you shared very important professional and also personal uh, aspects of your life that for, for me as well and in the first place have been uh, a great reference. You both have been a great reference. 
we will have so much time to spend together in the near future and the long future. And I thank you very much for taking part of this project. Thank you very much. We thank you, Andrea. Thank you, thank thank you, you Mauro. Mauro. Andrea, thank you. too. And I noticed interesting thing that uh, Rafi is moving his hands more than me and you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so it's not just Italians. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. See you next ciao, month ciao. for the next iFed Night Talk. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye.